So we are now recording. Good morning, everybody. My name is Matthew Burgess. I'm with the University of Virginia, and I will be moderating this Aperio Teaching and Learning call. Today is Wednesday, April the 5th, and we are very fortunate to have the incredible Will Mahajas from Longsight, who will be giving us a demo on open badges. Before we dive in and start talking about badges, we'll spend just a couple of minutes talking about announcements. I know that Neil Caden, who regularly does most of our announcements, is not able to be with us this morning, unfortunately. So we'll go ahead and see what kind of announcements we can pull out as a community. I know one announcement we definitely want to talk about is that registration for Open Aperio is still open, and I will go ahead and post that link in the chat. Open Aperio runs from June 4th to June 8th in Philadelphia, and for those of you who have not had a chance to go, it's really a great event uh, to see what's going on and what's coming next for Sakai and for all Aperio projects, and to get a chance to meet other people that you might only know virtually. It's a great networking event, um, a great event for diving in and learning even more about what the foundation does and what the foundation is planning to do for the future. So hope you guys will be there. I know that Dave cannot go, unfortunately. He's holding off until next year if it's in the US. And we will miss you, Dave. And we will miss you too, Terry. I'm sorry that you guys can't be there. But hopefully you guys will join us next year, which will be great. And I know I've seen Adam there in the past, so I hope we'll see you there, Adam, kind of in your neck of the woods since it's in Philadelphia and that's close to you in Providence, so hopefully you'll be able to be there. But there are going to be a lot of great sessions on the schedule, and so I hope that everybody who is able to come can be there. <laughs> and Adam says that he went to school in Philly, so wild horses could not keep him away, which is great. So, any interest in Open Aperio, if you want any more information about registration or about the schedule, just go to the link that I posted there in the chat. Also, don't forget that we have Lightning Talks coming up this month, our next round of Lightning Talks, five-minute presentations, teaser presentations about little projects that are ongoing or are just getting started in the Aperio community, and those are coming up on Thursday, April the 27th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Remember, those are going to be short and sweet five-minute presentations about all kinds of little projects that have maybe just gotten started or are in the idea phase seeking community support. So it's really interesting to hear about some of the cool little projects that have been generated all throughout the community that are just getting going. And you can have a chance to jump in and contribute or comment on those projects in the idea stage, which is really, really cool. So don't forget to put that on your calendar. If you haven't already, Thursday, April the 27th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And I see that Terry has also posted a link to the NYU skin video. Terry, did you want to say something about that, about why you posted that here? I figured that probably most people were on that um, mailing list, but just in case anybody missed it, it's really worth looking at um, what NYU has done going forward with the skins and the flexibility and some of the layout changes and stuff. Uh, it's a really good thing to, to view and be aware of. Yes, absolutely. Uh, thanks for posting that, Terry. We are currently modifying the NYU skin right now for our upgrade to Sakai 11 at UVA. And so we've been able to see firsthand just how good and clean and sleek it is. And it's going to be a huge thing for our users. I think they're going to be really pleased with it. And I think that all users are going to be really pleased with it as we consider moving it into Sakai 12 and then sharing it with the rest of the community. Adam says that it might even be better than cheesesteaks which would be high praise indeed. So like that is a true mark of excellence there. So I don't think we have anybody from NYU on the call this morning at the moment, but thanks to everybody from NYU for taking the time and effort to develop that. It's going to be a huge piece of the UI improvements to Sakai that we've been seeing over the last couple of versions that are really, really great. So. Thanks, Terry, for posting that video. And if you haven't checked it out, I really encourage you to go ahead and take a look at it.
Any other announcements from anybody else on the call before we go ahead and dive into Wilma's presentation? I'll give everybody just a couple of minutes to think about anything and come on the mic or put it on the chat. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and get started with Wilma's presentation. Okay, seeing none. Wilma, I guess we're ready for you whenever you're ready. So I see that you've already shared your screen with us here. So take it away whenever you're ready. Yep, thanks, Matt. Um, so I do have the screen share up, and when I've got my PowerPoint up, it sort of takes over my whole um, view here. So if you could help me just kind of monitor any questions that come up in the chat. Um, as I go through, just give me a heads up if anybody has a question. And, and do feel free to, you know, interrupt as I go. We don't have to wait to the end or anything. Um, so we started talking a little bit about open badges. I know Dave um, was showcasing some of the stuff that they had done at, um, at Johnson U. And um, they were doing a little bit with, with badges. And so that kind of stirred some conversation in the chat about badges in general and, and the, the Sakai badging site that I had set up um, a few years ago. So, uh, so I thought I would start off this session with just kind of a little bit of an overview. I'm not sure how familiar folks are with open badges, um, but if, um, if you're sort of new to the concept, you might want to know a little bit more about what they are. Um, essentially, Open badges are, are digital credentials. So they demonstrate mastery of a skill or competency. Uh, they're basically the digital analog to, you know, like a, a merit badge or, you know, a, an Eagle Scout badge or something like that. So basically it's a way of showcasing skills that may not be apparent um, in, say, an academic transcript. I mean, you, you assume that someone who's got, you know, a degree has critical thinking skills, but you don't know specifically, you know, what they've done that can demonstrate that. So it's a little bit like a portfolio in a sense, um, but it's more, uh, you know, uh, more visual. Um, so you've got sort of these little icons or badges that uh, correspond to a particular you know, completion of something, whatever that something might be. So some badges could be really small, very granular, maybe badges stack. So there might be like several badges that you earn in order to become eligible for a kind of an overarching badge. So there's, a, you know, a little bit of that going on. So there's no real, um, you know, designated size or, or uh, amount of information that a badge could cover that's kind of all still evolving. Um, but they're just sort of um, something that's been kind of in the, the educational space for a few years now. And I think it's kind of gaining some, some more momentum. Um, things sometimes are a little slow to get going in, in higher ed. Uh, badges have been uh, pretty popular in um, K through 12. And so they, I think they're kind of moving more into the, the higher ed space as people are seeing um, that it can be valuable. It can be a motivator for people to earn a badge. Um, it comes uh, also with some of the uh, elements of gamification so that it's it's kind of like you you complete a quest or you um, you know complete some sort of you know trial and then you earn this badge as your reward so it's kind of a gamification type of element um, these credentials can be displayed online or via web pages, social networks like Twitter, Facebook, even LinkedIn. You can display badges so that people can see at a glance that you have these credentials. And they're built on open standards, so open-based um, standards that are interchangeable. And uh, the open badges specification was originally developed by um, the Mozilla Foundation, and it has since actually sort of uh, gone through a little bit of an evolution, and I'll, I'll talk briefly about that. Um, 
so some recent developments in digital badging. Um, I was fortunate to attend uh, recently here in Orlando. There was the IMS Global Summit on Digital Credentials and Badges. That was here uh, just this past February, so a little over a month ago. And I've always been interested in badges. So when they, I found out that was happening here, I was really keen to get to the event. Um, but IMS is actually taking over stewardship of the development of the specification. Like I said, it was originally developed by Mozilla, um, and Collective Shift is sort of a learning uh, development company that, that was working with Mozilla on the badge specification. They're now actually developing the badge specification 2.0. So um, they're sort of the original recipe that was out there already, and then they're, they're enhancing it and making it um, a little more robust for the 2.0 version, which is uh, supposed to be released later this year. Um, and badges, as I mentioned, they are gaining momentum in higher ed. Uh, they are being used a lot more at institutions and even some statewide groups, uh, particularly for workforce development or professional development. Um, workforce development in particular, a lot of employers are interested in badges because they want to know that the, the people, that the candidates they're bringing in have the specific skill set that they're looking for. So if there are any badges that can demonstrate that this person has a particular skill, um, then that's really valuable for those workforce uh, types of connections. And also for prof professional development for um, faculty, um, maybe they want to add that to their professional development portfolio. I know Educause is now giving out badges for completion of a lot of their workshops and events. Um, there's a lot of other professional organizations that are doing that. And I have some links here that um, I won't go through at length, but I'll just kind of pull them up quickly. And I can make this um, available afterward in case anybody wants to visit some of these links. Um, this is the uh, Wichita State University. Um, they're doing some online workforce education using badging. And so they have a whole slew of different types of badges available um, for professional development. Um, for the state, and it's it's primarily teachers, um, but uh, it's it's something that they they were talking about at that summit. Um, the Foundation for California Community Colleges is another one. Um, they actually have a um, they they've come up with sort of this digital citizenship collection of badges for students. Um, so it showcases. Uh, different types of skills that, um, that people want their students to have when they um, come out of education. I'm getting a little bit of background noise, so I don't know if somebody wants to put themselves on mute. Um, anyway, so that's uh, the Foundation for uh, California Community Colleges. Again, it's a statewide group that's um, developed this set of badges that they share with, uh, with folks in the state. Um, Passport Studio is another one by Purdue. And it's a, they call it show what you know. It's basically the idea, it's a more detailed academic transcript. So it kind of works in concert with a transcript to showcase, again, those specific skills that might not surface, um, you know, based on, you know, a list of courses. And um, Colorado College or Colorado Community College System. Um, they have some badges there as well for their um, manufacturing program, and these are, are very workforce related. These are skills that um, are in demand for specific types of jobs. So having these sorts of badges really helps with a lot of their workforce um, development programs to kind of market them and, and make them accessible to employers. And, um, and then finally, the Oregon State University Continuing Ed, they have a lot of continuing ed courses that they award badges for. So um, it's something that you can, you know, again, put in your digital backpack and display anywhere. So these are just a few examples of um, how badges are being used in various places. These are all based on that open badges standard. Again, it's it's the idea is to make it flexible, interoperable. Um, you would upload all these credentials to a bit digital backpack that lives somewhere on the web, and um, and then that information travels with you. Um, it's not tied to any one institution necessarily, um, even though the issuing party is a specific. Uh, entity. 
And then finally, there was some interesting um, stuff that came up at the summit about some work that's being done to attach digital badges to the blockchain as a way of recording and storing a permanent um, credential. So I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the, what the blockchain is. It has to do with Bitcoin. Um, it was developed for the financial industry. And so Bitcoin is basically electronic currency. And um, the blockchain is, is a ledger, essentially. It's a ledger of transactions of Bitcoin. And, um, and it's, it's sort of um, redundant because all, all kinds of people that, uh, around the globe um, are tracking these transactions and they get paid to do that. They're called Bitcoin miners. Uh, they mine this data and they, they track it and keep it so that these uh, transactions can be traced and so that it's um, not changeable. You can't just change it in one place. It has to be changed in so many places. It's almost impossible to do that. Well, the idea is to use that technology to create um, and attach digital credentials to a transaction so that it creates this global permanent record that's independently verifiable. Um, so if uh, you know a student maybe who is in a different country and they come to a, to a country where they're, they're in, they can't easily contact their institution to verify a credential, an employer could, could somehow use that blockchain technology to verify that they have such and such degree um, or they've earned a, a digital credential from such institution. So um, so that's still kind of in its infancy. It's a little bit of a, a bleeding edge sort of thing at the moment, but it was interesting to see that that, that was kind of on the horizon that people were working on that sort of thing. So. Um, so anyway, that's um, that's digital badges as, as an overview, not specific to Aperio. But um, let me talk a little bit about how you could issue badges. Um, and this can be done pretty easily. Anybody can, can set up to issue a badge. Two of the um, systems that are widely used um, are Badger, which is the first of the two. Um, they, this is an open source digital badging system. It allows you to issue um, organize, share badges. You can, um, it integrates with a number of, of systems. Uh, they are part of IMS Global, so they're part of this group that's developing this new Open Badges 2.0 specification. Um, so it's something that potentially, if there was interest in the uh, Imperio community, maybe we could integrate Sakai or some other Imperio projects with Badger. That would be really, really cool. Um, so that's you know something that's out there, or you could use it independently of of these and just kind of uh, work in conjunction with um, what you already have as far as your LMS. Um, and then uh, the other one is Credly, which is used quite often. And I've actually used Credly, and I'm going to show you um, how I used Credly for the Sakai badges. And it's a freemium service again, based on that open standard. Um, but it basically just a, provides a, a way to create and issue those badges and manage those credentials. And then users can create a free account and they can share those credentials out. Once they're uh, awarded a credential, they can share it out with their social networks or they can send it to their backpack or wherever they want to display that credential. Um, so Credly, again, you can create a free account. You can even issue credentials for free. If you upgrade to one of their premium accounts, you get a few extra features, like you get um, like a, a officially verified uh, issuer so that people know that it's you know, really an, an authentic institution that's issuing these credentials, that sort of thing. Um, but, uh, but they do have an open API, which can be integrated with, um, and that information is out there available for anybody. So how can you use all of this stuff in Sakai? Well, um, what I did um, a few years ago, actually, is I developed a, a course in Sakai as, as sort of a, a proof of concept, um, more or less, of how you could use digital badges um, in Sakai. And I'm actually going to switch over to Try Sakai to show you my badging site. Let me go back home. Is it in here? Okay. So this is... Um, the badging site in Sakai. And what I did was all of this was built with existing functionality. This is actually built, I think, in either 2.9 or 10 um, Sakai. Um, so there's nothing terribly, you know, uh, 
you know, new in what I've done here. I, I basically leveraged what lessons would allow you to do with conditional release to create um, a series of uh, quests and challenges that you have to complete. So, for example, um, this kind of gives a recap of how it works. Uh, basically, there are these little quests that you can do for each of these levels. There's three different levels of badging. There's instructor, trainer, admin. In each of these quests, you can um, choose to uh, take an assessment on a particular tool or task. And um, you have to score a certain percentage to count that um, toward your badge. And then um, there's different groups of quests. So you can pick and choose. You don't have to do all of them. You can, you can kind of cherry pick the ones that you want to do. And those sort of stack up into um, completing missions. And then once you've completed the required number of missions for each badge level, then um, a boss challenge opens up for that particular um, badge. So it's one more sort of capstone task that you have to complete. And once you do that, then you've earned the badge and the badge is um, delivered to you electronically via Credly. Uh, so um, for example, the instructor badge, um, if you go, let me actually preview this as a student, so it's a little cleaner of an interface. Okay, so here's the instructor badge, and um, this is a preview of what the badge looks like. I have preview on all of them because the, the badge, the image, was kind of the, the reward, so I didn't want to, you know, give that to people at the outset. Um, so, you know, you get the real version of it once you get the, the badge. Um, but you have to do three missions, and there's six missions to choose from, so you can choose any of these, the great communicator, content delivery expert, collaboration connoisseur, assessment superstar, evaluation extraordinaire, or um, site management master. So if you go into one of these, um, you'll see that that's where the individual quests show up. So like, for example, the great communicator has uh, three quests that have to be selected from here. So you can choose any three of these assessments to take. And once you complete these, they have the little check mark in them that um, shows that it's been completed. So once you complete three of these, then um, you'll see those checked off so you know how many you've, you've done for that level. And then once you've completed at least three of these missions, then um, the boss challenge opens up on this page. So, um, so that's kind of how they all work. Um, they do stack. So for example, like Sakai Trainer has a mission called the Tool Whisperer. And um, if you go in here, you'll see there's a big long list of tools because it's basically all of the tools um, that, that are in this particular site. But if you've already completed some of these for the instructor level, they'll already be checked off. So it's feeding from the same set. So you don't have to redo them if you've already completed them for another badge. Um, and, uh, and once you complete you know, 18 of these, I, and I forget how many there are, there's definitely more than 18, um, then that mission gets crossed off and you can go to the next thing. So, um, so the whole idea was just to kind of gamify the process of um, demonstrating mastery with each of these competencies. What I did was I decided, okay, what does it mean to be, um, you know, a, a well, um, you know, well-educated instructor in Sakai, you know, how, do, how do you use Sakai well? Um, and so maybe these different areas are areas where you might want to have a competency, and that's how I developed all these different um, subcategories for the missions. Um, and then uh, same thing with the trainer or the admin, you know, what are the skills that a Sakai admin would need? Um, while they need to know the tools, they also need to know about being a super user and doing some of those high-level um, you know, uh, back end tasks. So I have some some roles or some assessments that are specific to those admin types. Um, so again, that's kind of what you need to do when you're developing badges is think about the competency first. And then once you've identified those, you kind of build the badge around it. Because um, the badge should represent, a, a, you know, a discrete 
thing. So once you've identified what that thing is, then it, it's you kind of build it um, inside how you're going to measure that someone has met that competency. And that's how you develop the assessment that goes along with it. So. Um, so anyway, um, so this is how this site is built, and um, it's pretty simple. It's, again, it's just selective release for the most part um, and stacking these things up. Now, unfortunately, there is no automated badge issuing mechanism from Sakai. So what I'm using here is the gradebook, and I've renamed the gradebook as score because uh, in, in the, the gamified course that I have here, this, the score was more appropriate lingo. Um, but what I've done is um, from here, I actually go and I export. This is the old gradebook, by the way, because this was built a few versions of ago. I haven't um, really gone in and, and done much to it. Um, but I export it as um, an Excel file. And then once I've exported it, I, um, I go into Excel and run some formulas. I have a, a sheet that's set up with a whole bunch of formulas in it that checks for completion of various items because my, my selective release was a little um, complex because you didn't have to re complete all of the items. You only had to complete a certain number out of the items available. So it was a little more complicated than a traditional just, you know, do one through four and then you, you move to the next level. So I needed Excel to be able to do some um, additional calculations. But once I do that, then in, I just plug it into my uh, Excel sheet with the formulas. It gives me a list of everybody that's completed um, the items and then I get their email addresses and that's what I use in Credly so I just basically log into Credly and upload those email addresses and award the badge that way so the awarding of the badge is still a manual process although you can do it in bulk um, so if you had a bunch of people to award a badge to uh, you could upload a CSV file with their um, email addresses and names and it will you know send the, the badge to all of those folks at one time um, but that that last step is still a, a person involved. It's not a, a completely automated thing in Sakai. So um, so anyway, that's kind of uh, the badging site and, and badges in, in general. Um, are there any questions? I'm going to switch back over to Big Blue Button because I haven't really been monitoring the chat. So I would love to take your questions. <clears throat> Thanks, Wilma, for this overview. This is really, really great. And we have had some really interesting discussion in the chat. A lot of people clearly excited and interested. Jennifer mentioned that she has some faculty in English that have been interested and have been talking about this with her very recently. So this is clearly a very timely presentation and some great information on getting started. Um, Adam had a question about whether it might be possible to display these badges in profile, for example, so that you could see mm -hmm. what badges people had earned. And I guess that leads me to a larger question of maybe how you think we might go forward in displaying these badges in different places in Sakai, because forums also comes to mind for me. Right. So have you had yeah. any thoughts about that or what, you, what might you yeah, think Yeah, actually, uh, Adam's suggestion is exactly what I I had in mind as well is that I think profile would be the perfect place to display badges because um, profile it, it pulls from profile to put like your picture and things in in the form area um, it there's you know your profile follows you from course to course so it seems like an ideal location in Sakai to display that sort of thing. So it would be really great if we had an integration that would um, go and check your backpack, you know, and, and pull in any uh, badges that you've shared with Sakai um, via the profile tool, because that would really make for a nice location to share that information in Sakai. Um, let's see, yeah, Terry's asking, profile might also show in any rosters. Um, the roster tool, I believe, will pull your photo from your profile, depending which photo you're, you're using. Um, so it potentially there could pull it in as well. And that would make it nice for instructors if they wanted to just go in and look here to see, um, you know, who has which badges. Maybe there could be another um, column or something in here that, that shows, or maybe when you, you view a user's profile you see the detail and you see any badges that that person has earned 
Um, but yeah, I think that would be a, a great way to um, to integrate it into the interface so that it's not obtrusive, but it's still easy to get to. Um, and let's see, I'm trying to look to see if there's any other. So it looks like Dave also had some questions about how students or other users, I guess, interact with their badges on Credly. So do they create an account with Credly? How do they see those and how do they share badges that they've earned? How do they display that to other people? Yeah, let me log into Credly and show you. One second. While you're doing that, I'm also seeing some people commenting in the chat that just the idea of badging and being able to display it and showing badges to others is enough incentive for them to compete with one another and compete with you, Wilma. So that's good. You're driving <laughs> the competitive spirit here. That's good. Yeah. I, I've, it's been a while since I logged in, and I think I have my password reminder thing turned off. So let me see if I can get logged in here. Um, basically, you get an email. Um, and yeah, that's not my password anymore. Okay, I'm gonna have to do like a password reminder, which will take too long for this. But um, you basically go to Credly. Let me let me just show you the site. Okay, so you go here, and um, you can create an account if you don't already have one. You sign in, and it's free. And once you sign in with your email address, you can you get into this um, space where you can accept anything that you've been awarded, and it gives you the option to share this badge out to, and you can choose you know, Facebook or LinkedIn or any other social networks that, um, that show up in your list. So you basically um, can opt in to, to share it, or you can just kind of have it in your Credly um, backpack and, and just keep it there if you didn't want to share it. Um, but people, when they're awarded a credit, they would need to go and create a free account and then be able to sign in to get to it, to be able to share it out. Um, let's see. Oh, Dave is saying uh, with the Noodle API, it would be cool to see the others say, um, Wilma just earned a Sakai Ninja badge or, or something like that. Yeah, that would be really cool for the for the bullhorns, you know, or the social alerts um, to be able to have the ability to do kind of little status updates on to do with badges. That would be cool. Um, let's see. How do other... LMS platforms integrate or leverage badging. From what I have done in my research, um, Canvas and Moodle and um, D2L has also been active in, in this space. Um, not as sure about Blackboard, but uh, they typically will award badges based on completion of an item. So like it, it's usually tied to the gradebook in some fashion. So if it's something that's being sent to the gradebook, it's either a completion of an item in the gradebook or it's a completion of a course. And then they issue the badge from there. So they've got some sort of integration. Like Canvas, for example, integrates with, um, with Badger. So uh, you know I, I'm not sure which one Moodle uses or if there's different ones, but there's plugins and things that you can um, install, which are similar to our contrib tools that would integrate um, to be able to send that credential information out to a badging service. Um, most of them don't rebuild the badging service in the LMS because that's, there's no need. There's other um, platforms that are already built to, to handle that piece of it. It doesn't really make sense to rebuild that in the LMS. So really what you need is an integration to those already existing services. Um, let's see, Trisha's wondering if you um, sign in with your LinkedIn account, if they would show up in LinkedIn. Um, I, I think LinkedIn used to have a page where the badges would appear. I don't remember if, if that's still the case or um, if there were some issues with it. I don't know. Um, but I do know that when you log in with LinkedIn, you do have the, um, it, it automatically captures your LinkedIn profile, what you share with it, so you can choose to share your badge out. But I think what it does is it just puts like a, an update on your LinkedIn profile that says, I've earned this badge, and it, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily have like a, a listing that people will go to to see all of your badges. 
Um, Trisha wants to know if I have any comparison of badging services, any major differences. I haven't really used Badger. I've used Credly and I've used Open Badges by Mozilla um, back in the early days. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot of differences. Um, Basically, it's a service, you know, you, you get awarded a badge, you, you claim your badge once it's been awarded, and then you share it. So for the end user, there's not a whole lot of difference. It's more for the issuing party that there's more complexity. So, um, for example, how you set it up. And Credly had a really nice interface uh, for being able to batch award um, bulk numbers of, of badges to people. So that was kind of why I went with Credly. The um, the the Mozilla um, Open Badge backpack was a little more labor intensive to issue the badges. Um, and so that's why Credly kind of came into being is to make that piece of it easy for people. Um, let's see, Dave says it's from 2013. Are you talking about the um, the course? The, the Sakai badging course? Or are you talking about I think, something? I think he's talking about the link that he posted right above there, Wilma, that open badges post is from oh, 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 okay. Sorry. I'm just kind of randomly picking things to read in the chat. It's like um, a buffet, browsing yeah, through the chat buffet. Exactly. Because yeah, it keeps moving, you know, when somebody types something new in, it all jumps. Um, yeah, but the the site that I built, I actually built that, I started building it in, in 2013. That's why I was thinking that's what you meant. So this has been around for a little while, um, so it's not terribly new, but, um, but yeah, that's, yeah, it's interesting to see how things are evolving and, and becoming a little bit more a um, little more mainstream so definitely uh, worth looking at again and see how we can tweak it and with a lot of the new things in Sakai now like with the the noodle improvements with the bullhorn and things like that um, and I know there's a lot more interest in um, you know having more uh, student dashboardy kinds of alerts and things um, this could play into that really nicely I think if there's uh, a badge aspect to it and um, just as a quick and and this is not meant as a, a sales pitch but there is a on the farm site if you've not been to farm this is where a lot of the um, you know ideas and things are posted I did post under Sakai enhancement ideas um, a link or um, an idea here for badges in Sakai. Let me see where it is. Yeah, bad badging for gamification, it's in there. So if you're interested in badges, if you'd like to see some sort of integration, I encourage you to, to you know, show your interest here. And um, and I'm not talking on behalf of Longsight. We have no specific plans to <laughs> necessarily develop anything. But, you know, if there's enough interest in the community and people want to gather and get a farm project going around badges, I personally think that that would be a really uh, worthwhile thing to do. I think it would be something that, um, that could be a very engaging aspect for, um, for teaching and learning to be able to add to the the Sakai uh, toolbox. Yeah, absolutely. I think so too. As part of a teaching and learning event last fall, we had a professor from computer science who talked a little bit about gamification and you know how he was using gamification in his courses. And his presentation was really awesome. But it was awesome in part because as a computer science professor, he had built his own independent hero quest like game as the course. And not every instructor is going to be able to do something quite that cool, obviously, but with stuff like this badging and the quests that you developed in your badging site where people go through and progress through different tasks and different levels and earn badges, you know, that's that same kind of gamification strategy, but in a way that's going to be a little bit more accessible to less technologically minded faculty. Yeah, it's definitely something you can build right now. You don't need any special expertise. All you need to do is, is understand how conditional release works. Um, so, you know, it's something that, that anybody could set up. Um, so I think that's kind of 
you know, nice that it's, you know, you don't have to wait for something to be built. You can, you can go ahead and build up your lessons and your, your quests and your badges and, and get all of that part set up. And then later down the road, if there's ever more enhancements to tie that in and make the badging, the badge issuing a little more automatic, then that's just kind of gravy. But the hard part, really, the part that takes the most, um, you know, neurons to set up i think is the um the the actual you know competencies for the badges and how they're going to be earned and how they're going to be assessed and that's the piece that that anybody can do so dave had some questions about how the badges are actually created in terms of their image content which goes mm -hmm. back to something that jennifer mentioned earlier in the chat about the fact that she was very interested and thought this was timely because she has a graphic design intern working for her right now that might be able to design some image content. So I wonder, Wilma, if you could say a little more about where the actual image content comes from, how that gets designed. The images in this site for the badges, actually, I made these in, um, in Adobe Illustrator. So I, I just created a little badge in Illustrator and I changed out, you know, the Sakaiger and stuff and, and put the different um, banners on top. So I just use Illustrator to create them. Um, the other badges in this site were actually created by um, a graphic designer that uh, created all the imagery for the site. Uh, that was sort of, I showed her my badges and she kind of had kept them in keeping with that. And we put the Sakaiger on all of them because we figured that would be cute for, you know, for Sakai badges. You kind of want the Sakaiger on there somewhere. So, um, so that was sort of the inspiration for these. But a lot of the, um, the badge uh, platforms like Credly has a badge builder in it. Um, so if you actually go, let me see if I can just see it like an image or something. Yeah, here it is. So they have a, a badge builder. So you don't need any special expertise to be able to design. You just sort of pick, um, you know, what you want your badge to look like. And you can, you know, put a title on it. And a description, and, and then it, it's going to update that text and everything with um, the very basic elements of a badge. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a graphic design intern, you can get a little fancier. Um, so you don't necessarily have to go with one of these stock shapes or colors that are available in a badge builder system like this. Um, if you have the, the resources, you can just have somebody else um, develop something that's a little more custom. Um, but typically badges, you want them to scale well. You want them to look pretty good when they're small because they're typically displayed small on the screen. They're not going to, you know, so you don't want a lot going on. So a very simple, clean lines is usually a good thing because um, it's going to scale down to a small size pretty well and still be legible. All right, any other questions? Any other questions or comments for Wilma? I see that Dave has commented that, you know, places like Khan Academy, a lot of K-12 schools now are starting to use more badging, which means that this is something that a lot of students will be the next generation of higher ed students may be expecting as they move into that environment. So, you know, another yeah. reason for us to, to get involved. Um, Definitely. Um, some positive feedback from people like Terry. Key presentation for the year. Uh, great job, Wilma. <laughs> Thanks, we'll Terry. Award Wilma a badge for this presentation. Uh, yeah, this I, I should get a TNL badge. We should develop a badge <laughs> for all the people that present at the teaching and learning calls. That would be great. <laughs> right. We're going to have to incorporate this presentation into our actual meetings. We need yeah, to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for inviting me to talk about this. This is a favorite topic of mine, so I hope I didn't ramble on too much about the Open Badges Initiative. But I do think, given that it's open and, and appears all about open source, I think it makes a nice fit. So, No, this is really great. Thanks, Wilma, for taking us all the way through the presentation, showing us really every aspect of the badging world, creation, implementation, use in Sakai. I mean, this has been a really great and really comprehensive presentation. Unfortunately, Dave, Evelyn, you do not get a badge. Badges are not retroactive. They're only going <laughs> forward. 
So no badges for you. We're only going forward at this point. I know. Sorry, Trisha Gordon's alter ego, Trisha Gordonish. No badge for you <laughs> yet. You'll get a badge in the future. And also, we do have a comment here from Adam that we want to put on the record and echo. Uh, congratulations to Wilma on your appointment to the PMC. Um, oh, we saw you. that email go out this week. Very exciting and great recognition of all the work that you do for the Sakai community and the Aperio community with presentations and work like this. So thank you very much for that. Well, thanks for the, the kudos, and it's, it's always a pleasure working with this community. It's, it's a great, you know, vibrant community and a lot of wonderful, ta talented people. So um, it's, it's really a pleasure. So we probably should take just a couple of minutes and talk about our next couple meetings. Uh, just a reminder that on April the 19th, uh, Nadine Blanchette from HEC Montreal will be here to talk about Tengen Course Outliner. Um, and then on May the 3rd, Adam Marshall from Oxford University will be here to talk about some lessons additions uh, that are going to be included in Sakai 12 or are scheduled to be included in Sakai 12. Um, and then remember that we don't have a meeting scheduled for June the 7th. We will have no meeting that day uh, due to Open Aperio. Many of us will be at Open Aperio, so no meeting that day. We do have an opening on May 17th. Uh, if anybody has suggestions or proposals that they'd like to present uh, for May the 17th, we do have an opening on that day. We don't have anything scheduled as of yet. So if anybody has any ideas uh, or suggestions, we do have a couple minutes now if you want to come on the mic or post those in the chat. Um, or you can always email those um, to me or to Neil Caden or to Trisha Gordon. Not Trisha Gordon-ish, but the actual Trisha Gordon. And Louisa comments in the chat that uh, she missed this session, but she will really appreciate the recording. Absolutely. I think I am definitely going to go back and look at the recording as well just to kind of get a refresher on this since I was not as familiar with badging. But this is going to be really something great because, as several other people also mentioned in the chat, this could be really good for faculty professional development. And I think that's a real use that I could see for this at UVA just to get started. You know, this would be something great that we could use with faculty professional development among our on grounds and online faculty. So that's, that's a really great idea. And Dave also comments, badges could be created for getting started in Sakai, how to teach an online course level one, how to teach an online course level two. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea, how to make accessible online course sites. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think that that's a great idea to, to award these badges so that, you know, faculty can display them, can show their competencies. I think it's something that younger faculty in particular could really get behind. They can use them on year-end reviews, tenure reviews, to show the competencies that they've earned you know, during the last several years. I, I think those are, are great ideas. And accessibility is obviously a huge initiative for many schools, including UVA. We're really starting to get more involved in accessibility and encouraging our faculty to make their sites more accessible, so badging could help us with that. Yeah, I think all those ideas are really great, Dave. And Terry comments that if anyone thinks the badging doesn't matter, think Eagle Scouts. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And Dave also suggests that you might even need to show your badges before you could be approved to teach an online course for someone. I, I do kind of like that idea. I, I do like the idea of being credentialed, earning certain credentials before you can be officially approved to go on and, and teach a course, particularly if you're teaching entirely online, that could be a great and potentially fun way to encourage faculty to do that. I really like that. Yeah, I think actually one of those links, uh, one of the professional development groups was doing that. They were awarding a badge um, to be able to teach for them. So that's definitely a great use of it. Yeah, I really like that.
Any other thoughts, questions, comments? Terry comments that badging also represents recognition for short steps rather than a full course. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I, I liked something that Wilma said that was also reflected in some of the earlier comments in the chat that one of the nice things about badging is that it shows credentials or achievements that don't necessarily appear or aren't necessarily appropriate for a transcript. And so I, I like that it kind of adds in some things that potentially could be very important and very valuable but aren't necessarily things that would show on a traditional transcript. Jennifer comments, this might be a good suggestion for faculty development, and she may talk about it in their next meeting. I hope that you do, Jennifer, and if you do, I hope that you'll report back, you know, either via an email to the list or in some comments in our next meeting on, on how that goes. I, I'd love to hear about uh, how your faculty respond to that. And Dave comments that badges can represent better detail than a letter grade. Uh, absolutely, because they can be, you know, specific about, you know, certain tasks or certain processes or um, certain materials that have been mastered. Yeah, absolutely. And they're very customizable, which I think is really cool as well. And Jennifer comments that they may also boost attendance to her events if she offers them for IT training. Absolutely. People are competitive, as we've seen in the chat, where people were talking about earning badges to compete with other people in the call. So uh, we may want to uh, use that to tap into people's competitive spirits. So I'll wait just one more minute to see if anybody has any final uh, questions or comments or uh, comments about meeting topics for our next open meeting, which is on May the 17th. Um, but otherwise, we can go ahead and sign off just a few minutes early today. Um, thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you so much, Wilma, for putting together this great presentation. Uh, it generated a lot of great discussion for us, and I think it's going to be a topic that we will return to a lot in the future. Um, so thank you all very much, and we hope to see you all back here uh, in two weeks on April 19th uh, to join us and Nadine Blanchette for a discussion of Tengen Course Outliner. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. I think we're all wrapped up, so have a great two weeks, and we'll see you right back here on April the 19th.